I tell everybody I do I did everything your mama, your grandma, whoever raised you told you to do. I always wanted to know, you know, could I be a successful entrepreneur? And I can be completely wrong about business from 24 to 30. And then I could go get a job at Walmart and work there from 30 to 65. So I would have had the same retirement as a lot of my peers, but I wouldn't have the regret. I, I was flipping cars on Craigslist. I okay. did like seven to 14 grand a month. But back right. in the day, Craigslist, I would go flip was. fish tanks on Craigslist and we would make a ton of money just flipping fish tanks of all the weird items, right? Yeah. We, so it was contracts for people. If you knew how to lay carpet, if you were willing to do a delivery service, yep. if you did dog grooming, a lot yeah. of those type of like blue collar small businesses yeah. would post on Craigslist. That's how I made my first hundred thousand dollars. No air. I am so excited to be here with you, JT, JT Automations. I actually have been following you. You've been following me. So I'm so excited to Absolutely. be able to come here, have you on the show. Let me ask you some questions and give the audience all the value that you have. How are you doing today? I'm good. And thank you so much for having me on the channel. Yes, I'm so excited. So it's so funny because we have kind of a long history of knowing who each other was, but never actually meeting. I literally found out about you. And this is a true story because you had made a video about my video. And so on the YouTube, it said, hey, this person is using your video. Are you okay with that? And you know, of course, mm -hmm. totally okay with that. I love sharing the information. I love everything that you're doing. So let's get into it because you have a vibrant yeah. YouTube channel. You have a YouTube yeah. channel with over 300,000 subscribers. You've been yeah. putting out great content for years now. And you yeah. have an amazing video that has over 800,000 views on YouTube. And it's the simplest way to make two thousand dollars per day talk about that video like what inspired you to make it tell me some of the stuff that you're teaching in it we'll actually put a link to it in the description box let's talk about that video because that is just like a mega hit Oh, yeah. yeah. So I believe in like practical entrepreneurship. Uh, yeah. As many of you guys know that's watching, there's a unlimited ways you can make money. But that video particularly was talking about the pallet business. So okay. believe it or not, these little raggedy pallets that we see on the side of the road, there's a business somewhere that has a pallet problem, meaning that they're taking up valuable real estate. They need that for their products, their warehouse space, whatever. But there's another business somewhere that needs those pallets. So in that particular video, what uh what I did is I I went around with the expert, a guy that was doing it 40 plus years, and okay. he actually showed us how did he go out in simple steps he uses to source the pallets. Sometimes he gives them for free, sometimes he pays a fee and hauls them away and then takes them to another location. And that's a, a real simple, practical way anybody out there uh can make money, whether you have a truck, you rent a truck, and that I just my whole channel, just for anybody that's new, is all about just practical, simple yeah. entrepreneurship, real yeah. ways that you can make money. And we tend to stick to uh, a lot of the old school ways to make money. Now we're branching out more and doing the, the newer things. But I like tried and true ways to make money, which is why... Uh, I did the reaction video to your video, uh, like you mentioned earlier, because yeah. real estate is a big part of my retirement. So yeah. definitely love real estate and shout out to all of y'all that are watching this content to, to gain real estate knowledge. Yes, I love it. And so that is amazing. And I want to just dive into that more. We're going to talk about the real estate in a second. My audience mm -hmm. knows I love real estate. Number one way to wealth. But you are just such a great entrepreneur, like you said, helping people have a business. And so your channel yep. has just been, you know, just a wealth of knowledge of different businesses, how to make money with different businesses. So yep. let me go into a little bit more detail about this pallet business, because again, okay. you enlightened me. I did not know about a pallet business. I didn't know about some of the other businesses. Again, you have another video out there about you can make $55 dollars per hour, um, you know, with the independent courier. So you have these great yeah. business ideas that have, you know, and again, you're getting tons of views because it's such great content. So talk about, you know, like you said, your channel is all about different businesses that people can yeah. start tried and true stuff. So give me a little bit more detail about, you know, how you came to become just this great entrepreneur. 
Oh yeah, I tell everybody I do. I did everything your mama, your grandma, <laughs> whoever raised you told you to do. So first person in my family to to get a master's degree. Uh, first person in my family, uh, well not yeah, in my immediate family to join the Marines and did well with that. And uh, I worked. My last job was in corporate America for a company called Berkshire Hathaway that's owned by Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, who's passed away now. But after doing all of this, this military stuff, this college stuff, this corporate America stuff, I always wanted to know, you know, could I be a successful entrepreneur? So way back 10 years ago, I was 24 years old. And that's back when we thought retirement age was 65. So here's my crazy but truthful plan. I said I could quit my job at 24 and leave okay. corporate America where I was a manager at. And I had an 18 month guarantee and all of that other good stuff that they give you in corporate America. And I can be completely wrong about business from 24 to 30 and then I could go get a job at Walmart and work there from 30 to 65 and I still would have the same life as a lot of my peers because I'm from a little country town right so I would have had the same retirement as a lot of my peers but I wouldn't have the regret now I'm not telling you all to jump into entrepreneurship and worst case uh, scenario go to Walmart but yeah. that's how I jumped into entrepreneurship Stop. You are watching a very important conversation on our podcast, but let me tell you about another very important cause, children's illiteracy. The Marley Sims Foundation is my nonprofit organization, and this episode is sponsored by the Marley Sims Foundation. We are committed to combating children's illiteracy because... A child that cannot read by the third grade is three times more likely not to graduate from high school and 10 times more likely to go to prison. We have got to start doing our part and start fighting children's illiteracy and get our kids reading. Please donate at marleysins.org and you can get this free t-shirt just to show your support and help us fight children's illiteracy. It is so important. This is a serious conversation, so let's get back to it. Yep. So, so what jumping are some out, of those businesses you did? You said, you know, you had all of these different businesses that you've tried. Yep. You was like, if you've done it, I'll try to talk to me. Tell me some of the businesses you tried. Cause I just, I love an entrepreneur. I love an yep. entrepreneur story. So talk yep. to me. So I started off in the Marines. I, I was flipping cars on Craigslist. I okay. did like seven to 14 grand a month. This is back in the day when everybody wanted to put like Kool-Aid colors and cartoon yeah. characters on the car. So uh, what I figured out was, uh, at least in the South, a lot of us can't spell. So <laughs> I would go to Craigslist and intentionally misspell Chevrolet because all the people that I wanted to target, they going to call them box Chevys anyway. So we right. would go buy them one place. Mako okay. used to have a special. It was like 250 They wouldn't take no yeah. dents out, no scratches yep. out. Yep. They'll just spray it, right? And we're not going to get candy apple red, which is the color that everybody wanted. We said, what is the darkest red? you would give us for this $250 and they would just paint it red. We would mm. put it right back up on Craigslist, Facebook marketplace, wherever. And we would resell a car. I might buy it for two grand, uh, spend two fifty in getting it painted at Mako. And then we would sell those cars for seven, nine, ten thousand dollars nice. right? So profit each month, I would clear seven to 14 grand flipping cars. Uh, I was stationed in a place called Beaufort, South Carolina, in uh -huh. the Marines there. Prior to that, I was stationed in Japan. And um, for anybody that's a military person that's watching, you, you know what an MOS is. But so I don't confuse anybody. An MOS is just a job. So my primary job was Aviation Supply Marine 6672. My secondary job was I was what they call a marksmanship coach so i would have to go out there and coach people how to uh shoot guns i'm gonna be honest i got in trouble right and the way i got in trouble was i would only help the women shoot i wouldn't help any of the guys shoot because i like i don't really want to like lay beside a guy all day in the sun while he try to shoot a gun so to punish me they put me in what they call the pits that's where we pull targets up and down. So what I did is I went to the grocery store, which we call the PX. I would yeah. buy up a lot of grocery and I would bring it to the pits with a hot plate. So yeah. anybody that's in the military knows what I'm talking about. But real quick for everybody else, pretty much if you go to the rifle range, that's a whole day, usually a whole week lost. Yeah. Where yeah. half the day you shooting, half the day you pulling pits. Well, if you yeah. pulling pits, you stuck in the pits. There's yeah. a bathroom down there, and that's about it. And we had a little shed that we stored the targets in. So what I did 
was I turned that shed uh, that we stored uh, targets in and I turned that into a restaurant. Right. Uh, and my my first name is Jonathan. Uh, I was what they call the pit in CEO when I got in trouble. My job was to make targets. There's another guy that has a megaphone and he tells you targets up, targets down. His right. name was Jonathan. Right. Okay. So, so the name of the restaurant, this was a ghetto restaurant. It was called Jonathan's and Jonathan's. So like he had the walkie talkie and he would tell me, hey, look, uh, we really need you to do some real work today. But right. other than doing real work, man, I made uh, I made cheeseburgers, hot dogs, bologna sandwiches. We ran out of meat some days. We did cheese sandwiches and okay. I cleared <laughs> We would do like eight hundred to a thousand dollars cash That's a day, and I would give him half the money because he would look out for me. So we made like I can't tell you his his name now because he's still in and he's actually an officer now. But we, like that was how I first got into entrepreneurship in the military. Then when I got out of the military, I uh, went to college in a place called Charleston, South Carolina, yeah. and um. I already knew Craigslist. I was out in the military, so I couldn't do my restaurant play no more. And right. we would flip a lot of stuff on Craigslist. I yeah, know that sounds man. crazy now because no, everybody's thinking it. Amazon, eBay, Macari. But back right. in the day, Craigslist, I Ooh, would go flip was. fish tanks on Craigslist <laughs> and we would make a ton of money just flipping <laughs> fish tanks of all the weird items, right? Yeah, we would, yeah. We would flip fish tanks. And what we found out is that I could get a discounted fish tank at like a mom and pop aquarium shop. And then right. I could just clean it up and I could resell it at retail um, yeah. to somebody else as well. It's so already drilled and everything because it came out of a mom and pop aquarium. So we right. made money doing that as well. But then once I started getting in the real business, because I didn't have an LLC when I was doing all of this. Right, um, right. A independent courier service. Uh, that's when you buy big white kidnapping vans and mm -hmm. you deliver pharmaceuticals and mail. And the reason why I say big white kidnapping vans is because that's what all my buddies would pick at me and say. But uh, they didn't understand that the psychology behind it, at least at the time, is that your mind remembers white vehicles the least. So if you think about a lot of police cars have a lot of white in them, uh, mm -hmm. FedEx has uh, a lot of white in it. UPS is supposed to represent luxury. So the brown is supposed to be leather. The other color is supposed to be like gold. Uh, okay. But your United States Postal Service is a bunch of white. Uh, yeah. So every day, you don't want somebody that's moving a quarter million dollars or more worth of mm -hmm. freight um, around in like a bright pink or bright orange or any mm -hmm. any noticeable color. So every day I'm moving a quarter million dollars or more of pharmaceuticals and mail. So I jumped on that business again from Craigslist, right? I right. made my first real money yeah. off of Craigslist. Yeah, so I found yeah. the gig on Craigslist, found a cargo van on Craigslist yeah. uh, and, and really started that business. That's how I made my first hundred thousand dollars. I know what you're saying. JT, was you making three, four hundred dollars a day in the military or seven thousand plus in the Marines? You should have been made six figures, but I'm not going to lie. I was really into sneakers and women and, and I'm better now by the grace of God, but I ain't save up no money till I got out of the Marines. So I made my oh, first six yeah. Figures. So I made my first real six figures once I got out and started my own independent courier business. Um, I did fish breeding. I'm going to be real because not everything I did was successful. I right. failed at fish that's breeding. That's a good point. And, that, and I love and now, you know what? And that's why I said yeah. I've actually loved your content because you talk about good entrepreneur stories. Here's things yeah. that work. Here's things that don't work. And that is really valuable to people because I think everybody comes into entrepreneurship. Everybody wants to be a millionaire. Everybody wants to make that first $10,000, but every business, you know, some businesses are harder than others. And so I feel like you have yeah. so much great, you know, in real world knowledge, you know, just yep. in the trenches of what actually has made money and what hasn't. So I absolutely love that. So let, let's go back because you you said okay. so many wonderful things yeah. that I was just like, preach, preach, preach. Yeah. I didn't want to interrupt you because yeah. um, Craigslist was one of the things that my mentor first taught me with real estate and where I was finding deals was on real estate. I was I still to this day use Craigslist and my team uses Craigslist oh, yeah. to source deals directly from the seller. Cause remember if a seller, mm -hmm. a sellers can put their properties up or, and they don't want to use a real estate agent and you can filter out the realtors that you get what I'm saying. So anyway, Craigslist, tell me about like, okay, so you just use what you knew. Is that kind of what the thought was behind Craigslist? 100%. Yep. A hundred percent.
So I knew I could make money off Craigslist because I flipped yeah. cars back in the day. This is not a recommendation yeah. to flip cars or start restaurants in the pits either. But I <laughs> knew that is Craigslist not bad. Was Actually, I, I, feel, I know some peeps that make some real money flipping cars. Like, depends <laughs> on how you want to scale it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so I knew that. But um, they had a jobs tab on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And yeah. one day I was like, man, let me just see what this is. And I thought it was just going to be like, you know, nine to five jobs. I didn't know they actually had contracts out there. So it was contracts for people. If you knew how to lay carpet, if you were willing to do a delivery service, yeah. if you did dog grooming, a lot yeah. of those type of like blue collar, small businesses yeah. would post on Craigslist. Back in the day, you could post on Craigslist for free. I think yeah. now it's a little bit of a fee depending on what you listed like five bucks yeah <laughs> yeah yep so a it's lot of free. it's not free anymore you're right it's like five bucks but it's still super cheap Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still not bad for any small business out there that's right. looking for a place to uh to find workers. So they would post a lot of gigs like that. So I clicked on it one day and I just saw that they had a delivery, uh a delivery contract um that it said it paid between five hundred and fourteen hundred dollars a week. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, that's good money. I was in grad school uh yeah. in College Park, Maryland at this point. Uh yeah going to the University of Maryland. So I was like, man, this sounds easy. I love to drive naturally. I'm a country boy. So I said, I'm going to just give it a shot. And, uh, and that's how I did it. But yep, yeah, to answer your question, 100%, it was just trying what I already knew. Yeah. Um, and I want to encourage people out there, don't be afraid to fail because I failed way more businesses than I got right. Yeah, but we yeah. still figured it out and grew, you know, six figures, now seven figure business.